Welcome everyone to Main Street Musings. I'm your host, MPP Bobby Ann Brady. Let me take you on a tour of the main streets and hamlets of beautiful Norfolk County. We have such a wealth of culture, natural beauty, charm, a fascinating past, and a dynamic present. And of course, a great future right around the corner. This all deserves to be reflected upon, celebrated, and shared far and wide. Join me on my journey. Let's go have some fun. Welcome to Delhi, a place I'm pretty familiar with. It's where I was born, raised, and where I live. I have left town a time or two, but Delhi is also the heart of tobacco country. As I watch the sun rise, it reminds me of early tobacco days and what a great area we live in. I may be biased, but Haldeman Norfolk is the very best place in Ontario. And this wonderful part of Haldeman Norfolk was settled in the 1820s when lumber was the initial industry. As time wore on and smoking became popular, tobacco took over. Overall, today farming still rules the area with ginseng and tobacco playing major roles. As you explore the area, you'll notice different ethnic halls, such as the German home, Hungarian hall, Polish club, and the former Belgian hall. Food is really good at all of them. Fried chicken, cabbage rolls, hmm, making myself hungry. Hmm. I'll have a drink instead. Okay, I'm back. Speaking of the halls, the former Belgian Hall set the stage for many amazing musical acts over its run from 1948 to 2017. The Temptations, Bobby Cretola, Tommy James and the Chandelles, April Wine, Rush, the Guess Who, the King Bees. I could learn how to play guitar by the time I got to the end of this list. So suffice it all to say, a lot of great acts graced the stage for all of us to enjoy at one time. Delhi hosts many memories for me, my high school days as a Delhi Raider, my hockey playing days. In fact, over there's the arena where I played boys hockey until I was 19 years old. Someone roars, Bobby scores at the good old hockey game. Hey, here I am in quaint Cortland. Cortland was established in the early 1800s by a group of settlers from the United States. And today it's the main thoroughfare between Norfolk and Tilsonburg and vice versa, because of course the road runs both ways. Portland has a lot of history packed in its little boundaries. Portland United Church is a real beauty, built in 1890. And the Cortland Cemetery has many area settlers buried within. It's another way to absorb the area's rich history. Back to the future though, if your tummy is growling, hit up Vivian's Country Cookin' or down the road, the Cortland Bakery. Mmm, tasty pastries and European food items. I need a chocolate pie before we leave town. Anyway, Cortland is also an industrial hotspot. It has a manufacturing base that cranks out trackless vehicles and check out Cadman Power Equipment who make irrigation systems and export agricultural and industrial machinery worldwide. Titan Trailers is a more recent industry, but it has grown very quickly. Side note for any rail fans out there, the St. Thomas and Eastern Railway started operations in the area in November 1998, operating on a former CN line. It's a short line railroad operated by GeoRail that serves places like St. Thomas and Tilsonburg. For those of you who like to rip around on a dirt track, there's Gopher Dunes. It draws riders from all over North America, offering world-class riding and entertainment right here in our own backyard. And the Schuster family, they're top notch. I like to keep my wheels on the ground, so I bypass the track and hit up the amazing trail system on my bike. And if you've been giving her at the dunes and want some peace and tranquility, head back to number three to the Lions Community Park. Actually, I could use a little break. I'll see you soon in Langton. And here we are in Langton at the intersection of Highway 59 and 12th Concession Road. It's a hamlet. Hamlet, to be or not to be, that is the question. Well, the answer is Langton. It's a nice place to be. Although in its past, it was considered a banking hub for tobacco farmers. And speaking of banks, many still remember it for the infamous 1950 bank robbery. Today, it's about peace, tranquility, and fun. And it has the cool Langton Fair, which many of us just enjoyed. And it's been running for 135 years, which is absolutely amazing. And the fair is a good place to get hammered. Well, there's a nail pounding contest held during the Langton Fair. And I've been told to pound salt before, but not nails but I digress. The fair also has a tobacco tying contest and don't forget about the parade, which is led by either the Sacred Heart or Langton Public School kids. How do they decide who leads? Flip a coin, rock, paper, scissors, draw straws, guess a number? It's a bit of a secret. What's not a secret 
is that Langton is the birthplace to some pretty cool people. Canadian broadcasting personalities Annette Hall, Mike Anscombe, five-time Canadian dart champion Bob Sinave, and Paralympic gold medalist Annette Elizabeth. My favourite building here in Langton is the arena. There are not too many beauties like this left in Ontario anymore. This arena celebrated its 50th birthday in 2020. An important part of the community for five decades, the arena's tradition carries on today through generations of hard work and the dedication of its volunteer executive, coaches and hockey players. And it's got the very best ice around because it's so stinking cold in there. Let's go. Beside Long Point sits the beautiful lakeside community of Port Rowan. It's the birdhouse capital of Canada. I have some really nice birdhouses on my property that draw all kinds of birds. I especially like blue jays, cardinals, orioles, sparrows. Oh, I digress. Among many historical wonders, the Backhouse Gristmill is one of the few survivors from days of yore. It's located in the Backhouse Heritage Conservation Area and is a National Historic Site. Built by John Backhouse in the 1790s, this timber frame structure used water power to mill grain. Amazing that it's still here. Actually, it's the only mill from the War of 1812 still standing on the north shore of Lake Erie. Pretty well all the mills along the Lake Erie shore from the St. Clair River to the Grand River were burned down. Yes, this time it was by the Americans in the War of 1812. There's also a little bit of Hollywood history here too. Robert F. Hill, a film director, screenwriter, and actor who worked in Hollywood from the 1910s to the 1960s was born right here in Port Rowan. Silent films were his specialty. I really wish some politicians at Queen's Park would make silence their specialty, but I digress. As I look down Main Street, I'm struck first by what a beautiful setting it is with the lake on the doorstep. Long Point, which was protected by a group of wealthy duck hunters known as the Long Point Company, is an oasis of wilderness. It's an important bird migration for waterfowl and birds of all sorts and has many designations for its significance. The feeling I get here is one of nostalgia. The antique shops, the old fashioned ice cream parlor, boutiques and stores all have a very vintagey feel. Oh, hey, and there must be someone from Montreal around here. They're selling steamies on the main street. Those are hot dog specialties in Quebec. And building on what Port Rowan all has to offer are all the nearby cottages, marinas, trailer parks, duck hunting, and especially Bayfest. Bayfest is Port Rowan's annual Labor Day party, and it's been going on for 30 years. The three days of Bayfest feature multiple activities, lots for the kids to do, and an amazing parade Sunday afternoon at two, and fireworks that night. There's a midway, rides, food, vendors, and great entertainment, all nestled down by the waterfront and in town. I'll see you there next year. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the famous history of Abigail Becker, the heroine of Long Point. Abigail Becker was credited with saving the lives of numerous sailors caught in a storm along the shores, and she couldn't swim. If you've ever been along the shore of Lake Erie during a grand storm, you understand just how violent this lake can be. Today though, like most days, it's absolutely beautiful. Can you guess which hamlet we're going to stop into next on our way to Port Dover? If you guessed Vittoria, you are correct. No, it's not the famed Italian bicycle manufacturer, though I like bicycles and riding around our beautiful area, which offers many scenic vistas, but I digress. Vittoria is a lovely, quiet, and peaceful hamlet, but at one time, it was a hub. By the early 1800s, it was the most active and important commercial center between Niagara Falls and Detroit. Not only the hub of the Long Point settlement, but from 1815 to 1825, it was the judicial capital of the London District of Upper Canada, hosting the district courts and the registry offices. Vittoria's Baptist Cemetery is the burial place of many United Empire loyalists. Egerton Ryerson was also born in the area, and he went on to develop Upper Canada's education system. Historically, Victoria is a hidden gem that tourists would do well to visit. The Baptist Church, the Victoria Town Hall, and the Christ Anglican Church, which is still in its original form, are all worth a look. And worth a taste is the pizza at the Catherwood and Kiln restaurant. Wonderful pizza that gets many rave reviews. Mmm, I'm a big fan of the dill pickle pizza. And for more tasty dough, try the bread at the Good Bread Company. And I gotta say, it's not just good bread, it's great bread. And if you feel like breaking out of your shell, there's Colonel Peanuts down the road. Their treats are so good, it will drive you nuts. Get it? Nuts? Anyway, 
Also, be sure and visit the Cider Keg Farm Market. It's the quintessential country market with all the classics, pies, ciders, pastries, meats, ice cream, berries, veggies, chocolate, and more. And don't worry, if you shop till you drop, they have a farm market retreat on the property where you can rest your head. Victoria is small but mighty, kind of like me. Port Dover, possibly the most famous place in Haldeman, Norfolk, next to Lake Erie. And it happens to be literally next to Lake Erie. Motorcycle enthusiasts and people across North America and the world for that matter, know Port Dover for its Friday the 13th motorcycle rally, which has been held since 1981. In good weather, we can see upwards of 100,000 bikers roll and rumble into town. Traditionally, Port Dover is a fishing town. It was burnt down by the Americans in the War of 1812, but it was built back up again and remains to this day a charming place to enjoy. Sure, there are lovely tree-covered neighborhoods and side streets, but the main shopping area boasts many tasty restaurants, cafes, and diners, as well as classic old taverns, gift boutiques, clothing stores, cheese shops, art galleries, wineries, and souvenir stores. With any lakeside town, you get drawn to the water, and Port Dover is no exception, with its great sandy beach and warm, shallow Lake Erie water. And the water and the town's fishing tradition leads us to one of Port Dover's great Epicurean delights, the perch dinner. If you like fish, you'll love a perch dinner. You'll love it so much you may want to marry one, or maybe marry someone who owns one of the restaurants offering perch dinner, or at least go on a date to the Port Dover Harbor Museum or walk hand in hand along the pier. Earth to Bobby, back to food. A Port Dover specialty is its foot-long hot dogs. Savory and juicy, folks come from miles around to have one. I wonder what Joey Chestnut, who holds the world record for hot dog eating, 76 in 10 minutes, could do in Port Dover. Hmm, I digress. Port Dover from 1921 to 1979 was home to the Summer Garden Dance Hall, which hosted music's top talents ranging from Louis Armstrong and Gene Krupa to Jerry Lee Lewis to Rush. Unfortunately, it succumbed once to a Lake Erie winter and burned down twice. After the second time, it wasn't rebuilt. And it wasn't the Americans who burned it down this time. But you can rest assured, the bands still come and play in bars, the Lighthouse Festival Theatre, and outdoor concerts. You'll find your groove here in Port Dover, because don't worry, it's always the life of the party. Well, here I am in wonderful Waterford, in keeping with the spirit of the name of the town, no visit here would be complete without wandering around the bodies of water known as Waterford Ponds. Lovely and scenic, the ponds and surrounding lands are popular with hikers, swimmers, kayakers, and canoeists. Oh, and anyone who likes our fine feathered friends will have a bird's eye view of herons, kingfishers, red-winged blackbirds, and a host of others, especially from Black Bridge. But here on Main Street, I know that Waterford offers more for everyone to enjoy. Take, for example, the Old Town Hall Theatre. This restored 1902 gem has a 180 seat auditorium that hosts some very cool musical acts and artistic and theatrical productions. The summer lawn concerts are a hit. Just bring a blanket or a lawn chair or just sit on the seat that God gave you. That works too. There's always an influx of visitors to Waterford in October for the famous Pumpkin Fest. Linus of Peanuts fame would think he finally found the Great Pumpkin. In fact, he'd see hundreds of Great Pumpkins. There's much more to Pumpkin Fest, though, than just pumpkins. You may like the odd beer. Well, they've got you covered with the Craft Beer Garden, featuring many local craft beers and ciders. And if you like to partake in speed, well, there's the Midway with plenty of fast rides. But if you like to admire old cars, there's always the car show featuring many amazing rides, but in a stationary position. There's plenty of music and, of course, the parade. All these activities would make anyone hungry. Fortunately, Waterford also has you covered in that department. Feel like something round? There's great pizza and there's great Chinese food. Baked goods and deli sandwiches will also tempt you. Basically, forget about your diet for a while when you come to Waterford. Well, really forget about it anywhere in the riding. Now that I'm all hungry, I better start thinking of something else. There are antiques and boutiques to bring out the shopper in you. Waterford is just one of the many charming places with plenty to offer in Haldeman, Norfolk. See you in the next town. Ah, Simcoe, so many good memories for me in this town. My first retail job at the Simcoe Town Centre when I was 14. And of course, I spent 23 years in town working for former MPP, Toby Barrett. Simcoe is a big little town to be sure. Plenty to do and experience. 
and some big names have come from or gone to school here. I heard the band on the radio yesterday, and it made me think of Rick Danko, who attended Simcoe Composite School. And being a hockey lover, I can't help but think of Rob Blake and Red Kelly. But back to the here and now. Like I said, there's plenty to do. One of the great traditions of this town is the Norfolk County Fair and Horse Show. You know, I always wanted to be a cowgirl, so I like the horses and the country music. And as a young girl, I always loved Young Canada Day here at the track. And this fair isn't the only big gathering we have here in Simcoe. There's the Simcoe Heritage Friendship Festival, which is a great show of arts, music, entertainment, and plenty of good times. If you like looking at history, looking all shiny and new, there's the beautifully restored Norfolk County archives at Eva Brooke Donnelly Museum. If you like looking at bright lights, there's the fantastical Simcoe Christmas panorama from early December to New Year's Day. And when you want to take a moment to honor our brave veterans, there are cenotaphs, and most amazingly, the Norfolk Carillon Tower. Built in 1925, it's the second Carillon ever installed in Canada. Relax and listen to the free 23 Bell Carillon performances. And if you want to see some of Hollywood's latest or fall asleep in a comfy seat, we have our movie theater, which is always ready with hot popcorn, candy, and drinks. But as good as popcorn is, you'll need more food energy to enjoy all Simcoe has to offer. And lucky for hungry people, there are lots of great restaurants from which to choose. Craft breweries, pub food, wine tastings, Italian, Chinese, Asian, and plenty of classic Canadian fare. When you've eaten and gotten your strength, you can shop and maybe you won't drop. Simcoe has all kinds of interesting shops, boutiques, and stores sprinkled around the streets. Clothing, shoes, winter, spring, summer, fall, Simcoe really does have it all.